Hello, and welcome to the Trempleau United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Mary Beth. This is October 3rd, 2021, and I'm excited because today we begin a series called God's Story, Our Story, which I am basing on a book by Randy Frazee and inspired by Reverend Park Hunter. So I'm excited. We're going to go 30 weeks. We're going to start in Genesis. We're going to end in Revelation. And each week we're going to work our way through scripture, um, which means the scripture readings will be a little bit longer. Some of it is paraphrased, but I, I think you'll enjoy it if you Make sure that you check in every week so that you have a, a sense of um, continuity. I think you'll enjoy it. So let's begin with our scripture reading, and, and we'll let Jamie do that for us. God's story, our story, creation. Reading in excerpts and paraphrases from Genesis chapters 1 through 9. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered by deep waters. And the spirit of the God hovered over the surface of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And then he separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. On the second day, God created the sky. On the third day, God separated the land from the sea. And on created a seed-bearing plant and trees and vegetation. On the fourth day, God made the sun, the moon, the stars, and he divided day from night, marking the seasons and the years. On the fifth day, God created the sea creatures, great and small, of every kind and every bird. And on the sixth day, God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock, small animals, each able to produce offspring of its own kind. And God saw that all these things were good. And then God said, let us make human beings to be like us. And so God created human beings in his own image. <clears throat> in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and then govern it. Rain over the fish in the seas and the bird in the sky and all the animals that scurry along the ground. And then God looked over all that he had made and he saw that it was very good. And God rested on the seventh day and he declared it holy. And God placed man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat of the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you will surely die. Now, the man and the wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. The serpent was the shrewdest of the wild animals and the Lord God had made. And one day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Well, of course we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open if you eat the fruit and you will be like God and you will know good and evil. So the woman was convinced. So she took some fruit and she ate it. And she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. And at that moment, their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt the shame of their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves and they hid from the Lord God amongst the trees. And then the Lord God called out to man, where are you? And he replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid of because I am naked. Who told you you are naked, the Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? And the man replied, It was the woman you gave me who made me eat the fruit, and I ate it. The Lord God asked the woman, What have you done? The serpent deceived me, she said, and that's why I ate it. Because the man and the woman had disobeyed God, they were condemned to toil for their daily bread, suffer in pain and childbirth, 
and experienced sorrow and death. They were banished from paradise. God gave them clothing to cover their shame and to protect them. Adam and Eve's sin was repeated. Their son, Cain and Abel, quarreled. Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. And even though Cain was cursed for the murder, God continued to protect him. As humanity spread, so did sin, until all of the creation was affected. And the Lord observed the stent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. And it broke God's heart. So God decided to wash the earth clean and start over. Now Noah was the only blameless person living on the earth at that time. He walked in close fellowship with God. And God instructed Noah to build an ark and fill it with all the creatures on the earth. And he, God caused it to rain, flooding the earth. And Noah and his family were safe in the ark until the flood waters receded. Noah worshiped the Lord and the Lord was pleased saying, I will never again cause the ground curse the ground because of the human race. Even though everything they think and imagine is bent towards evil since childhood, I will never again destroy all living things. As long as the earth remains, there will be plants and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night. And God reaffirmed this covenant with this fan, Noah and his family, giving them stewardship over all creation and all living creatures. And God set a rainbow in the sky as a reminder of this divine promise. Yet this was not the end of human evil. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jamie. A few years back, a group of folks from this church and actually far beyond our walls read the whole Bible in a year. I often heard a version of, I never heard that before, or, or I thought that was in the New Testament or that was Moses. And it's little wonder because every Sunday I choose a bit of scripture and I, I turn myself fairly inside out, begging the Holy Spirit to give me a point to share with you. And the Holy Spirit is very faithful. Whether or not I get it right is another thing. But we do jump around with these scriptures and to try and pull it all together, it's almost like picking up your favorite novel and randomly turning to a paragraph and reading it, putting it away until the next week and doing that again, and then trying to put the story all together. And when we do this jumping around the Bible, and we must, to be honest, the people and the, and the places and the events, they can get all jumbly. So Jesus walked on water to board the ark where he fed 5,000 inside from a fish that Jonah caught. It can really get jumbled up. So this series, God's Story, Our Story, is my stab at helping us um, learn more deeply the order of the Bible and hopefully align ourselves with God's people and get to know God better. So the Bible is a collection of books. Some of them are historical, some are poetry, some are mythical and, and or prophetic. But all are the inspired word of God interpreted by scribes and prophets and kings and apostles over the course of, we think, about 1,500 years. However you understand these books, one thing is profoundly clear. The whole point of the Bible is God's love for creation and especially God's love for you. So let's start at the very beginning, as a famous governess once said. Genesis literally means beginning. In the beginning, God created all things, and oh, the diversity. And sometimes I wonder if God wasn't kind of running out of ideas. I mean, seahorses, hammerhead sharks, blue-footed boobies, kangaroos, which are really just white tails that can beat you up. Well, eventually, God got around to us. In God's very own image, God created us, and God created Adam and Eve. And it went well. God said it was very good. And after giving them this beautiful life in this beautiful garden, God had only one request. Guys, eat anything you want, except for the fruit from this tree right here. This is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat that. Well, what God gave humans, in addition to endless love and grace, was free will. Uh-oh. We all know what happens when we are given a choice. 
we choose things. Adam and Eve messed it up and they got evicted from that beautiful garden. Their son Cain made a terrible mistake by killing his brother Abel. Noah, on the other hand, made choices, good choices. He chose to live a life with God as his anchor. Now Jack is the kind of guy who always has a smile on his face. Everybody loves him. And if you asked him how he can be so positive every day, he will tell you that when he wakes up in the morning, he can choose to have a good day or he can choose to have a bad day. He chooses good. He says we all get to choose how to live. Well, one day he owns his own business and he accidentally left the back door open. Well, he was robbed at gunpoint. One of the robbers panicked and shot him. Luckily, he was found quickly and rushed to the nearest ER. In the ambulance, he says he, was, he remembers thinking, I could live or I could die. I can live or I can die. Well, the doctors and the nurses in the ER had looks on their faces that were just not hopeful. And one of the nurses was shouting questions at Jack. And when she asked, are you allergic to anything? Jack shouted back, bullets. And then he smiled and he told them to operate on him as though he was sure to live. And thankfully he did. Every single day, we all make hundreds of decisions. God gave us this gift. And we could abuse this gift by not listening to the desires of God. We can banish ourselves to regret and shoulda, woulda, couldas by knowing what God would want for us and turning away from it anyway. We can say that obedience doesn't apply to us. Obedience to God doesn't apply to, us, apply to us because we are modern people and we know a whole lot. We can even lead others along with us in our poor choices. And when we do that, our gardens get strewn with garbage of guilt and shame. Or, or, we can listen carefully to what God has to say to us. We can read the Bible as people determined to fulfill God's claim that we are very good. We can believe that God made us in God's image to be co-creators, caretakers of our earth, lovers of one another and siblings to the sacred son that God sent us. Now, every single story in our Bible stems from one thing, free will, because every character has a choice to make just like we do. And woven throughout the stories and the people and the morals of scripture and beyond into the stories of our own lives, there is one constant, God's promise, God's promise of love. May that lead us into every decision. And now may you go into your week grounded in the love of God in every decision that you make. May you know that Jesus Christ walks with you and that the Holy Spirit meets you in the stillness of your heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.